welcome friends in our last session we discussed the importance of subject like manufacturing strategy how manufacturing can provide advantage to the country as well as to an organization and manufacturing is one sector if it is properly handled can give long term sustainable advantage in last session i coined the term competitive advantage through manufacturing now in this session i am giving you the term long term sustainable competitive advantage if it is properly handled now to understand that how manufacturing gives you long term sustainable advantage we need to understand the concept of operation systems now in this session we will be focusing on manufacturing or operational activities or production activities from the concept of system or theory of system now as we discussed in the previous session the first section that manufacturing or production activities are value addition activities so that concept will give us an idea that what is the system concept or what is the theory of system in this production or manufacturing activity now in the system concept how do we study a system that is important that you have a system where some thing is within the system and everything axed is external to system so the focus where we are discussing our problem that boundary decides our system and everything outside that boundary is out of the system or the external component to the system now if i see the manufacturing from this point of view this processing or the conversion system is something which we want to govern which we want to manage and this conversion system gets input from various external entities the output of this conversion system also goes to the external environment so there are different types of pressure on our conversion system one what is desirable what type of products we want to manufacture so what is desirable and from where the inputs will come so that you can produce the desirable output so three things are there one is our input that is one thing the second is the conversion and third is output so these are three important sub systems which are making our production system one is input sub system second is conversion sub system and third is output sub system and in some of the recent cases you will also find one control sub system so that is the fourth so you have one two three and four one two three will always be present one two three will always be present fourth may be optional in some cases fourth may be there some means in most of the cases fourth will be there but there may be few cases where this control sub system may be absent but one two three these are important components important sub systems of our manufacturing system now in the input sub system you have inputs in the form of materials which i am saying as raw material components uh, the sub assemblies all these are the form of material then personal personal means your engineers labor supervisors uh, 
all the staff all the manpower is the personal so manpower is the personal capital the money how much monetary resources you have and monetary resources define your ability to have good manpower whether you can afford manpower who is demanding very high packages or uh, if you do not have that much capital. So, you will compromise on the technical skills on their managerial skills uh, of your manpower. So, capital is another very important input for your manufacturing or for any kind of uh, managerial systems. Then utilities, utilities the most important utility for any manufacturing system is energy and water. Without energy and water manufacturing system cannot work. So, uh, some of you can think that uh, utilities can be the part of material, but uh, since uh, the share of utility is so high that it is always advisable to study or to point utilities as a separate because these are the support system, these are not the actual part or actual component of your finished product. But to have your finished product uh, utilities are important without energy your machines are not going to work. So, uh, but energy is not the part of your final product. So, therefore, we are discussing utilities as a separate input and then information what type of product you want to make. So, that is also a very very important uh, input to your uh, manufacturing subsystem and uh, nowadays uh, since uh, many of you know that uh, how our manufacturing is becoming more and more data driven and when we are talking of data driven manufacturing. So, information also becomes uh, uh, a very important critical resource critical input resource and lot of organizations are putting lot of emphasis. Uh, uh, you can say efforts uh, on getting real time information, real time data. So, that uh, what type of products, uh, how to have uh, more flexibility in your manufacturing all those things are coming and uh, during our course we will see that uh, how information has become a very critical input resource in our manufacturing activities. So, these are some of the input. Uh, subsystems uh, you have material personal capital utilities and information and uh, you believe me that uh, for each of these uh, inputs you can have a separate subsystems. Uh, so, we will discuss in the next figure. Then the second important uh, subsystem is your conversion subsystem where these input resources are processed and uh, so that you can get the desired products and services and uh, these desired products and services are actually called as outputs. So, how do you convert them and uh, we require lot of efficiency, we require lot of uh, managerial skills to convert these inputs into desirable products and services. So, uh, actually this conversion subsystem will take a lot of our time for uh, discussion and then the output is the third important uh, uh, you can say subsystem that uh, what type of products what type of services you are requiring and uh, depending upon uh, the customer's choice uh, the target customer and here we require some of the inputs of uh, uh, marketing information system also that uh, your market research department who is uh, uh, closely monitoring the behavior the changing pattern of the customer. So, they give you information they give you input that uh, what is desirable what are the expectations of the customer. So, that uh, you can build those expectations uh, right from the design stage in your product. So, uh, that is uh, the output part, but you also have a control subsystem where you try to see whether the output which you are producing is acceptable in terms of quantity, cost, quality etcetera. Because if you are uh, for an example, if uh, you are uh, running a low cost airline and uh, in low cost airline your focus is primarily on uh, providing the lowest possible fares to your passengers. But the way you are managing your operation, the way you are doing this conversion process. Uh, all resources are 
costlier resources your conversion process is not uh, uh, efficient one and as a result of that uh, you will see that your prices are much higher than other airlines. So, you need to see that uh, your co control subsystem is uh, not effectively working and uh, therefore, your cost is escalating than your competitors and uh, the control subsystem therefore, helps you to keep check on whatever parameters which you are setting for yourself, uh, whatever level of quality you expect, uh, whatever level of production output you are setting for your organization, whether you want per day for a product, let us say a plant is running a steel plant, you want 100 metric ton output per day, but uh, you see that your plant is producing only 60 metric ton, 70 metric ton. So, it is operating at uh, 60, 70 percent of efficiency. So, this uh, control subsystem will help us uh, in diagnosing our uh, conversion process and uh, we can fix the problem once we identify the uh, our entire process. So, this control subsystem is also very important uh, and uh, this is the job of uh, a manufacturing engineer that uh, how to design that control subsystem so that you can identify the areas of problem. So, these are four important subsystems uh, and uh, as I say that uh, uh, this is input subsystem, this is conversion sy subsystem, this is output subsystem and then you have uh, this type of uh, control or feedback mechanism through which you get this information through this control mechanism to, through this feedback mechanism uh, you get whether your output is desirable or not, whether it is as per the acceptable limits or not and it becomes a very vital information. If you see our previous discussion, we say that information is a very important input to the system and that information many a times come from our feedback mechanism from the output and uh, this will set that uh, how to uh, change the configuration of our conversion subsystem, so that uh, output is as per the acceptable limits. So, this is how our uh, uh, operation subsystem actually operates. You have inputs uh, then conversion and then output and this control feedback. Now, as I was saying that uh, at each level these are four primary subsystems, but within these four primary subsystems. Uh, you can have various subsystems within them also. For example, we have one input system which is related to material. Now, material is one very important input to our entire process. Now, in our operation management classes, though that is not the subject matter of uh, this particular course. But in our operation management classes, we have good amount of discussion on our material management and that material management starts with our inventory systems. Now, the entire inventory system, how do you develop the EOQ formula, what type of uh, P or Q type of inventory system you are going to follow, what type of uh, bill of material you have uh, and the entire material purchase planning is the part of this material management subsystem. So, this material management subsystem is a very important component of your input subsystem. So, this is just one example that each of these subsystem. So, you can understand in this broad way that uh, first we have a production subsystem within the organization. If you consider the organization within organization we have a production subsystem and then within production subsystem you have three major subsystems input subsystem, conversion subsystem, output subsystem. In some of the organizations we do not have this control subsystem, but in most of the organizations we have this control feedback subsystem also. Now, within each of them you have further subsystems. So, for example, we discussed within input subsystem we have material management subsystem. So, how do you plan your material requirements? 
so depending upon the characteristic of your organization depending upon the characteristics of your customers you decide what type of material management system you are going to have now if your customer has different type of requirement for example if your customer has a very steady kind of requirement for example you are in the uh, business of uh, retail of grocery items you are in the business of retail of grocery items where the demand is almost very much horizontal type so now when the demand is almost horizontal type your material management system should be designed so that you can have minimum cost of that material you have minimum cost of that material if your output if your customer requires or if your demand is almost horizontal in nature so that is a kind of uh, uh, rule which cannot be changed on the other hand if you are in a product which is of some emergency nature you are in a business of mro maintenance repair organizations and in you are serving mro type of industry in that case responsiveness is more important so accordingly your material management concept will change depending upon what type of uh, uh, output you desire but if you don't understand this if there is a mismatch in your input strategy input subsystem and the output subsystem you will not be able to take advantage of your manufacturing uh, subsystem for the advantage of your organization so therefore i am emphasizing that at each subsystem there are different types of subsystem now if you come to uh, this uh, control system now in this control system one of the most popular control system is about quality you have some acceptable label of quality for your product we will discuss quality in this course in detail also but just to have a beginning idea quality is uh, uh, simply defined fitness for use and when i say fitness for use it means that uh, we need to have that level of quality which is good enough for our customers so if my customer is requiring a very high level of precision i must give that high level of precision to my customer but if my customer is not requiring the high level of precision so there is no point of giving high level of precision to that customer because high level of precision will increase the cost to that customer and the customer is not requiring that high level of precision gear is one such common example gear can be used in aeroplane and gear can be used in your normal sugar cane juice machine also now when you are making gear for aeroplane you require exceptionally high level of precision but when you are making gears for a sugar cane juice machine that level of precision probably may not be required so now what level of precision is requiring that i want to say is the acceptable quality level now when we have this feedback system we continuously monitor that what level of quality we are producing if i am making gears for aeroplane so i continuously see that i am maintaining that high level of precision then only those products will be acceptable to boeing to airbus or to any other company otherwise not so it is requiring a feedback system and if the deviation is more than acceptable limit uh, i need to give this information to my processing system and uh, we will immediately stop the our uh, production system and see what are the reasons by which uh, we are not able to do the things uh, within the acceptable limits and uh, after correcting after removing the problems after fixing those problems uh, we again start so this feedback system quality is one simple example in this case coming to this conversion system for example layout 
is one simple example of this conversion system that what is the layout of your plant, how the machines are placed and this simple thing, this simple subsystem of conversion subsystem, layout subsystem or the placement of machines within the uh, plant that is deciding one very important thing that is the efficiency of your organization. As in my previous session, I was mentioning that movement of goods from one machine to other machine is a non value adding activity. Now, if your machines are not properly placed, this movement increases. When this movement increases, your energy and by energy I mean to say the cost of conversion increases and as a result we lose efficiency in our conversion process. So, designing the appropriate layout itself is a very important subsystem of the conversion subsystem. There are many more, but just I am giving one sample example of each type of subsystems. So, in case of input we discussed material subsystem, in case of feedback we discussed quality subsystem, in case of conversion subsystem we are discussing this layout subsystem. So, these are the subsystems which we need to monitor carefully, so that uh, our overall system gives value to the organization. Then output subsystem, now output is as per the requirement of the customer, output should be as per the requirement of the customer, what type of products, what type of services the customer is looking for and that is a very important thing that is a very important subsystem the customer relationship CRM that is a very important type of subsystem of this output subsystem. Traditionally we feel that CRM is part of marketing activity, most of the time we study CRM under the marketing discipline, but uh, actually the product is being developed by the manufacturing setup production department. So, production department should always be an integral part of the CRM team, because they only can tell what is the best way to use this product and what is the best way to dispose this product, what is the best way to maintain this product. So, all these things are the part of CRM. So, if I very specifically say with respect to output the maintenance of the product that is precisely one component of CRM which is being taken care by the production department or manufacturing activities. So, what type of uh, maintenance maintainability your product has, what is the reliability your product has, what is the availability of your, uh, your product has all these things are the important component of your maintenance of system. So, at each level of this uh, uh, conversion process, we have uh, different types of subsystems uh, just for the sake of example, we have discussed that for the input, we have material management, for conversion subsystem, we have a layout subsystem, for output, we have maintenance subsystem, for feedback, we have quality subsystems and all these subsystems are not only 111, there are many subsystems in the input, there are many subsystems in the conversion, there are many subsystems in the output and there are many subsystems in the feedback system also. So, this is uh, just an overview that how an operation subsystem looks like. Now, some example to have better clarity about uh, these uh, production systems. So, I am taking an example of uh, service organization and one example of the manufacturing organization, so that uh, we can understand this thing in a very wider perspective. So, example I am taking of the department store and uh, you see I have uh, three important subsystems and uh, I request uh, my participants uh, that uh, 
identify the feedback subsystem for uh, this department uh, store system. Now, the input is in the form of web buildings, displays, shopping carts, machines, stock goods, the employees, supplies, utilities and customers. In a department store all these things are the input material, inputs to the system. Now, the conversion subsystem that means how are you attracting customers to your department store, how are you storing goods, how are you displaying goods in your departmental store, merchandising activities and then how are you selling those products, what type of exchange system means whether you have a centralized exchange system or you have a distributed exchange system or other type of e systems etcetera you are following in your departmental store all that is the part of conversion subsystem. So, how a customer is purchasing and moving away from the departmental store and output is the marketed goods the products which you want to sell through your departmental store. So, the marketed goods, goods which are moved out of your uh, department store that is the output and uh, as I say that I expect that uh, uh, you should write on the forum that uh, what is the feedback in case of a department store. Next we take an example of uh, uh, manufacturing setup, this is the automobile factory. And in the automobile factory, when you compare the inputs with the departmental store example, you will find that some of the uh, input resources are common, but some of the resources are different. Like here we have raw material, purchased parts, these are tools, equipments, these are something which are different than the departmental store example but utilities, personal, building etcetera these are same as in the case of uh, earlier example. Now, the conversion subsystem we very easily understand that transforming this raw material into the finished products, the automobile which you want to make two wheelers, four wheelers, commercial vehicles, heavy commercial vehicles uh, and uh, we use the fabrication, welding, machining, drilling etcetera and some assembly operation where we do uh, various uh, components put together to give uh, the final shape of the vehicle. And uh, obviously, the output of this automobile factory is the finished automobiles uh, that is the output of this uh, uh, factory. So, uh, you can make such type of understanding that what are the input, what are the conversion, what are the output. Uh, for any kind of uh, example, take for example, you can do on your own for hospitals, colleges, airlines, you take so many examples, all these three examples are coming from the service sector, but uh, uh, you can take many examples of the uh, manufacturing setup also like uh, you can take. Uh, some heavy engineering plant, you can take some foundry plants, these are examples of uh, uh, engineering or uh, you can say uh, other type of products, uh, heavy engineering, foundry, then uh, fertilizer plants. So, these are uh, some of the manufacturing activities and these are services activities and uh, I request that uh, you can make uh, this type of input conversion and output classification for these uh, examples and this will give you the idea that uh, uh, once we go for the analysis stage that where the problem lies and once we can uh, pinpoint the place of problem it will help us to easily correct it otherwise uh, if you do not know. Uh, where the problem is, uh, how will you correct it. Uh, so, this uh, classification of uh, uh, system into various subsystems uh, help us uh, in exactly locating the 
problem area and uh, that is the purpose we discussed uh, these two examples in the form of uh, primary inputs, uh, conversion subsystems uh, and outputs. So, uh, with this uh, we come to almost end of uh, uh, this session and uh, now I request uh, all these systems uh, whenever uh, not only this manufacturing system, but as a student of uh, uh, manufacturing strategy or the management course, uh, we should be able to apply this concept of uh, systems theory uh, to break our bigger systems uh, into smaller systems. Uh, so, this will help us uh, in proper diagnosis of our problems uh, and it will give us uh, much simpler uh, way to uh, act upon those problems otherwise uh, where will action be there and uh, you will not be able to locate those uh, point of uh, actions uh, which uh, will result in poor implementation of solution also. So, with this uh, uh, I thank you for participating in the second session of this uh, course of manufacturing strategy.